Section 6, Dictators in Europe in the Interwar Years, 1918-1939. to Introduction. The interwar years period in Europe, 1918-1939, to was a remarkable period in the global history. This was because the period witnessed the rise of dictators in European nations of Italy, Germany, Russia and Spain, whose activities was not only felt in their domains but globally. In fact, it has been argued by scholars that this were the period that produced Adolf Hitler of Germany, the main believed the man believed to be the architect of the Second World War. Learning outcomes. When you have studied this section, you should be able to 1. Describe the rise of Benito Mussolini of Italy. 2. Analyze the circumstances that led to the emergence of Adolf Hitler in Germany. 3. Discuss the nexus between the 1917 Bolsheviks revolution and the rise to power of Lenin and Stalin in Russia. 4. Highlight the factors that enhanced the emergence of Franco in Spain as a dictator. Rise of Benito Mussolini in Italy After the peace of conference of Vassalis, Italy was not satisfied because most of her demands for additional territories were turned down. In addition to the deep frustration, a government was haunted by ever-growing problems of poverty, hunger, unemployment, disease and inflation. The consequence of all this was that the communists and the socialists encouraged the people to revolt. Thus riots, strikes, revolts and conspiracies became synonymous with Italian societies. In fact, by 1921, it was obvious that Italian society required a fearless and determined leader to salve the country, Mussolini and fascism in Italy. In the election of 1921, a new party won just 36 seats in the Italian parliament. Its leader, Benito Mussolini, had a background as a socialist but proclaimed that he would save Italy from the menace of communism. The party appealed to ancient Rome, one, its extended arm salute and the symbol of the fascists which gave the movement its name. The Lateran Treaty 1928 with the Pope. Mussolini was a proactive leader who recognized the fact that he needed the support of the common people a majority of whom were staunch Catholics. Therefore, in order to warm his ways into their heart, he negotiated a settlement with the Pope in which the Pope was recognized as the ruler of the Vatican City and a large amount was paid to him as compensation for the loss of his territories. Mussolini and the Italian economy He made a giant stride to revamp the dampened economy of Italy through various policies such as a. He reduced government expenditures in order to control inflation in the economy. b. Redundant government officials were dismissed. c. The government imposed heavy taxes on the rich. d. Strikes and locks out in the factories were outlawed. e. He fixed 8 hours a day as working time in factories and compelled factory owners to contribute to life insurance of their employees. F. He adopted scientific methods of agriculture to boost food production. G. He also encouraged exports in order to improve Italy's foreign exchange reserves. H. He adopted scientific methods of agriculture to boost food production. I. He also encouraged exports in order to improve Italy's foreign exchange reserves. Mussolini's foreign policy and his failure. However, in spite of all the above highlighted approach and achievement, Mussolini had his own shortcomings. Mussolini dreamed of expanding the Italian Empire, particularly of converting the Mediterranean Sea into Mare Nostrum our sea. Therefore, he took some diplomatic decisions that later turned unfavorable to Italy. For instance, he attacked Ethiopia a poor backward country in Africa. For conquering this country, the League of Nations sanctions Italy. Therefore, 
The conquest proved very expensive for a poor country like Italy. By 1936, Mussolini concluded a treaty of friendship with Germany that was later converted to a military alliance with Germany in 1939. Besides, Mussolini conquered Albania, a small country in the Balkans. This military alliance with Germany made Mussolini to fight alongside Germany in the Second World War, which was disastrous for Italy. Germany in the interwar years in a similar circumstance like Italy, Germany, in spite of her difficulties, was able to make a rapid economic recovery due to the effort of an experienced industrialist, Gustav Strissmann. But this recovery proved to be short-lived one, as Europe was overtaken by the Great Depression. Adolf Hitler and Nazi's party, it will be recalled that the Austrian-born Adolf Hitler became the leader of the German National Socialist or Nazi Party in 1921. Having failed in an attempt to take control of the Bavarian government, he set about reorganizing his party as a military movement, not hesitating to purge his own followers. Hitler in the 1930s capitalized on the economic depressions brought about by the Depression and brought his party to power in 1933. He then quickly set up a reign of terror. Mussolini's relationship with Hitler was very strong. They shared similar views. Russia in the interwar years. The Bolshevik Revolution of 1917 was followed by three years of civil war, during which white Russian army supported by foreign troops tried to overthrow the new communist state. Lenin and his followers emerged successful but at a huge cost. It is estimated that some 13 million died in the civil war and through the famine it caused economic life was at standstill. In 1921, as an emergency measure, Lenin largely freed the economy and recovery followed rapidly. Lenin died in January 1924, leaving two men contending the succession, Trotsky and Stalin. Stalin and Dictatorship in Russia Trotsky and Stalin was the leading contender after demands of Lenin for the throne of Russia. Trotsky proclaimed that the new Russian society could only flourish within a communist world and the prime task was therefore to export a revolution. His opponent Stalin argued that the priority was to build the Soviet Union by creating communism within one state. When Stalin emerged victorious, it appeared as though the forces of moderation had prevailed, Stalin assumed autocratic power and created a personality court not dissimilar to those constituted armed fascist dictators. Spain in the interwar years, General Franco and dictatorship in Spain. By the 1930s, the days in which Spain had been a great European power were long past and she had therefore avoided involvement in the First World War. In 1933, a right-wing government came to power which provoked rebellion by national minorities. In early 1936, a left-wing government was elected with a large majority. General Franco modeling himself on the fascist dictators led a mutiny of the army in Morocco and invaded the mainland. The army, the political right and the Roman Catholic Church aligned with Franco while left-wing groups and the national minorities aligned with the elected government. The bitter war lasted until 1939 when Franco achieved the position of dictator which he had until his death in 1975. Study section summary. In this study section, you examine the rise and falls of dictators in Europe, particularly in the interwar years. In focus were Mussolini of Italy, Hitler of Germany, Stalin of Russia, and General Franco of Spain. This is the end of study section 6. Thanks for listening.